Right. Hello, Internet. Uh, this is another installment of uh, cleaning up and uh, disassembling and cleaning up uh, graphics cards. Uh, this is uh, one of my least favorites, but it's the uh, successor of the uh, Paradalet Volcanic Gallons. This is a, a Tonga chip. It's a uh, R9 380 uh, 380 4 gigabyte version from Wells Sapphire, as you can see. Uh, I don't know if the camera can pick it up. No, it can't. Oh well. Um, so I bought this uh, from uh, eBay uh, for like uh, 90 quid uh, plus the shipment. Uh, this is going to be a, a nice uh, gift uh, for a friend. Um, uh, previous owner said it was serviced uh, six months ago approximately um, physically the card looks clean and everything but uh, yeah we're gonna disassemble everything have a closer look um, as you can see there's no backlight on on, uh, on this one um, pretty simple pretty straightforward still a really nice 1080p uh, card uh, I've tested it uh, before um, uh, b b before I we started doing this video, uh, it is fairly silent, even under full load. Uh, maximum temperature of the core was uh, 72 degrees. Um, um, yeah, that's that's about it. So, uh, so we're gonna start off with uh, removing what else? The cooler. Oh, this is this is too big. Switch down. So this should be uh, pretty f straightforward, uh, fast and simple. Uh, I'm gonna remove uh, all the uh, all the dust and uh, whatever else is uh, under here. Pretty straightforward disassembly here. I'm gonna just remove all these tension screws. Um, this card has two six pins um, instead of uh, uh, any other combination of anything other. Um, gonna check uh, the thermal paste, thermal pads, replace whatever's to replace and uh, put everything back together and hopefully it works. <laughs> That card is coming off. Yeah. Oh, the card is not coming off. Uh, this was actually all these screws were from. Uh, right, the fan hub. So. Right. So this came out. A bit of slight dust. Nothing major. But uh, we can clean that uh, as well. It's a nice little touch here. Instead of all the cables going into. Uh, something uh, Sapphire opted to do a small hub here for the funds to connect, which is uh, which is a nice idea. And then a single uh, four-pin connector that goes to the board, and yeah, pretty nice and slick and sufficient design. So, uh, oh, this heatsink is still a bit uh, warm. Uh, the screws are out, the, uh, I just need to pull at it a bit, it doesn't, yeah, you can see some pretty thick pads and everything underneath, but the heatsink is not coming off. Hmm, why is the heatsink not coming off? There are no other screws. Uh, as you notice, I have not uh, disassembled this card uh, ever. Oh, yeah. Nope. I'm guessing the tension. Oh, yeah, there we go. The tension from the. Uh, right. The tension from the. Man, there's some thick pads there. Uh, tension from the uh, heat pads. 
uh, from the primary heat pads um, was holding the heat sink in place. Um, yeah, pretty nice uh, spread out. Uh, oh, what's going on here? There's some <laughs> the right the VRM portion. As you can see, the uh, the thermal pads were not touching correctly. So I don't know what uh, that demand in regards of uh, efficiency and, and all, but um, yeah. Let's replace these things. These look like one millimeter pads. And then the VRMs, they seem like uh, pretty thick pads overall. I have found an, a nice tool. Ta da! Some calipers here, which I'm gonna see. This seems like one millimeter. Eighty-three millimeter. So I think that's nearly uh, one millimeter pads. Uh, so the VRM uh, portion is there, and for the uh, VRM, it looks pretty thick. That's like a two millimeter pad, approximately. That's some pretty thick pads. Yeah, that's a two millimeter pad. So let's uh, go ahead and remove that and. That and that uh, so and that's this disassembly as you can see um, there's still some uh, paste and everything there um, card is dust less more or less and as you can see copper copper plate, a copper base plate and uh, a separate uh, separate plates for the VRM that still attach themselves uh, to the um, uh, to the fin uh, to the, the fin stack and that's pretty much it pretty simple, pretty slick uh, design uh, and uh, efficient so oh, I forgot to get some uh, q-tips right. Q-tips, if I can find them. So our tools for processor pretty straightforward uh, some uh, uh, basically some rubbing alcohol nothing special I'm rubbing alcohol uh, you shouldn't be using any anything else um, in that uh, regards uh, on a graphics card uh, yeah besides like a dust tool or something else um, well, the thermal paste is still a bit uh, liquid and everything. Um, it looks fresh, so yeah. The seller was uh, telling the truth that this might be serviced uh, sometime in the last six months. And let's try to use a bit of these. Residues. Mm -hmm. yep. that did definitely something, but we need a bit uh, more.
So after uh, wiping off uh, most of the surfaces, I'm gonna put this uh, in a uh, bath of uh, of water. Um, as I said, the fin stack looks pretty clean in between, and it's just the graphics card. Uh, uh, itself left with we're gonna use a bit of uh, q-tips and uh, trying to reassemble everything after that so Right, well, uh, this is running under a bit of uh, cold water. Um, let's try uh, to... Uh, cold water, sorry, hot water. Let's uh, try to clean this bit here. Um, so it's, it is it is okay to submerge uh, the fin stack since there's uh, only copper and aluminum there under... Uh, under uh, the water and everything, it's not going to be corroded as long as obviously you uh, leave it to dry adequately. Okay. Looks pretty clean. Let's use the Q-tips around to get any access thermal paste. Usually, when uh, somebody opens uh, old graphics card, older graphics cards, you don't expect to find uh, any signs of uh, servicing or anything else. Um, but uh, yeah, this uh, looks a, pre a pretty clean uh, card, which is surprising. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll. Can grab every, uh, get everything on the video and uh, get this uh, onto the internet so other people know what to expect when opening these things. Uh, as I said, this card will go as uh, as a gift to one of my friends back home. Uh, he, currently, I think he has like a sixty. Uh, what was it? He said HD uh, 68, 68, 70 or something. Uh, two gigabyte model, pretty, pretty old uh, card. It doesn't play as much, but uh, even with uh, a normal card like that, I think he said he plays uh, mostly World of Warcraft. Um, but even even with that, it's still uh, the uh, HD 68, uh, 70 is. Fifty a country call at the moment.
was uh, saying, uh, despite the uh, HD 6850 or 70, is, uh, is, uh, it's still okay to uh, run World of Warcraft or something. Uh, it's, uh, most of its years of uh, service are gone. And I think it has a 1 or 2 gigabyte uh, memory on the, that board, which is just not enough with today's uh, standards. So if you want a game on 1080p or something, Two gigabytes are just not enough uh, anymore. Uh, anyway, so this is a four gigabyte gigabyte model. Uh, this is like four generations after the HD uh, 6000 series, because uh, there was the HD 7000 series after, and uh, then the um, then the the volcanic islands uh, started the Pyrene Islands. Uh, so. Uh, Tahiti and Vesuvius and all that and then this is uh, the line after that oh, so it's three so it's three generations yeah I think it's maybe three generations somebody can correct me if I'm uh, if I'm wrong but anyway this is three generations the four gigabyte model um, uh, it still can hold up quite uh, nicely uh, for 1080p gaming. Uh, I did a superposition uh, benchmark on this for 1080p Extreme. It was doing, I think the final result was 1572 points uh, and the average was uh, like 15 frames per second but as you know the position um, superposition benchmark is quite demanding and uh, is just a benchmark to for us to see maximum capability of uh, of the cards and all um, so yeah that looks uh, oh somebody sent me a message uh, so yeah this is going to be a good upgrade for him and hopefully he will like it <laughs> Right, so I've put the heatsink uh, under uh, a warm, uh, uh, a warm uh, uh, bath. It's gonna sit there for like uh, until we finish the here, basically. Again, uh, the heatsink uh, consists only of uh, uh, copper and aluminum. Uh, the warm water will soften up um, whatever residue uh, is between the. Uh, fin stacks and everything and um, as soon as we're finishing cleaning up the core and the car the rest of the card we should be uh, fine with um, uh, reassembling uh, the card and testing it uh, again uh, right. so just gonna clean uh, the VRM portion with uh, a bit of alcohol. I can see the traces from the heat pads uh, on this bit and it seems like the um, the replacement heat pads were not sitting correctly on the VRM so I don't know if there was a overheating issue or not but I can clearly see that uh, most of the surface, half of the surface of the VRM was not touching uh, was not touching uh, the, the thermal pads and so the thermal pads were not doing a great uh, job here right so the oily surfaces are gone everything looks uh, clean the RM looks pretty clean as well so yeah everything looks uh, pretty nice Obviously, the testing after that will happen off camera. Sorry, I don't have all the necessary equipment and everything to uh, document everything, but you're gonna see the majority of uh, of all. Yeah, backplate is pretty clear. I can see some silicone traces um, behind here because of the silicone oil is uh, soaking through the PCB. Um, yeah, that's about it. So let's leave that by side. Let's check this bit out. <coughs> Sorry. So just 
cleaning up the, uh, the fans here a bit. The car looks uh, pretty clean. I could uh, I could open the hubs um, and see uh, if we could oil uh, the bearings uh, after a while. You know they start to sound like a jet engine. You know fans seem most. Uh, What's that here? It doesn't seem right. What's that? There's something, I don't know if the camera can pick it up. There's something there. Seems like a m melted? Seems like something melted. Anyways, that's not gonna have a, uh, an impact. Uh, well, this fan is much more dirtier than the other one. That's, uh, that's strange. Uh, I clean these fans with just a simple, uh, with uh, just a bit of water. I'll clean the shroud a bit. There's no RGB uh, on this, so no additional headers or something, uh, which is fine because my friend doesn't really care about RGB like most people should. But a lot of people these days they do care about RGB. Hey, I'm not gonna lie, even my computer has some RGB, but you know, I could have disabled it, uh, but it's not like I bought the equipment just for the RGB uh, factors and everything. So let's see if we can uh, access the, the port, maybe I can put a couple of drops of uh, oil in there. Oh, another message. Sticker is pretty tight behind the hub. Yeah, I can feel a void here. So that means there, the hub should be exposed behind this. And then if we can oil the hub inside, um, usually the the fan can run a bit quieter. Looks alright. Oh, the bottom fan. Bottom fan, uh, there's a bit more sound uh, to it when spinning, but um, yeah. Nothing, uh, nothing major. Mm. How can we access that? So we're gonna destroy the sticker. It doesn't. It doesn't really matter. Let's open one of them. See what. Yeah, yeah. There's a bearing. So you can see there's not even. So the actual the sticker itself is protecting the hub. Uh, the hub. So the bearing is exposed. We can drop. Uh, you know, one or two drops of uh, WD-40 in there and just. Um, uh, reattach it uh, back and that's pretty much it so let's do that uh, unfortunately that's gonna uh, destroy uh, the sticker but it doesn't matter Yeah, that's it. Let me get some WD-40. This was a bit unexpected. Uh, so, uh, WD-40 is something basic. You should probably use some um, grease, some specialized grease for uh, bearings like this. But, uh, again, just uh, even a basic service is better than nothing and I don't have any specialized degrees uh, so kind of gentle I'll squeeze really gentle there it is, that's a drop there Drop 
screw up there, and that's it. I'm gonna move blades a bit around. Again, this is going at the back of the uh, fin stack. It doesn't really matter as much. Uh, we did, and that's you know a, a fan after. So this card is f from 2015. So it's nearly six years old. God knows how many hours uh, of service it had. <laughs> at some point, I really wish uh, the cards who, who could have like a log or something for us to see how many hours of uh, runtime they have, but. It don't and just a, a simple drop of uh, oil is not gonna hurt anything. No, nope. I can't hear any uh, audible difference. Uh, but uh, you know, as I just said, uh, uh, a drop of oil is not gonna hurt uh, anybody. So uh, back to the uh, card. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the um, fin stack, fin stack from the. Uh, warm bath and let it dry not much of uh, debris inside so the water was mostly clean. Uh, the card itself looks a lot better than uh, a lot of the other things I've encountered. So yeah, let's go right ahead. We need some uh, pads now. So this is a, uh, a pad from Arctic... Uh, Arctic uh, Arctic, it should be the right. Uh, one sixty, one sixty three, and this was is it thicker? Seems a bit thicker. This looks like a two millimeter pad instead of one point five. Um. I think I have a 2.0 pad somewhere. Let me check. The 2 millimeter pad is a bit unusual. It looks like a 2 millimeter pad. Hello again. Our uh, camera decided to uh, shut down. Maybe we're uh, it's on a timer or something. Anyways, uh, just cutting the. Um, well, it's not exactly straight, but it will not matter. So the rule of thumb is uh, the it's okay for the uh, heat pad. Uh, to be smaller, it doesn't need to be bigger. So, because bigger can put extra tension between the screws and the uh, and uh, the PCB, and guess what? Yeah, card can go kaput uh, if you're trying to uh, reassemble it and over tighten it. So, this is being uh, a bit smaller. Doesn't will not have a massive impact um, because of the half millimeter. Uh, half millimeter difference. Uh, so let's cut another two pieces. Uh, we should be fine. Yeah, one there, one there, and all done. 
done. So let's start removing the films of these. Attach them to the memory chips. And then we need to remove the upper protective film. the heat to transfer to uh, take place because if you forget the protective uh, padding from the one side guess what the other protective pad is not going to be able to transfer heat over to the base plate and uh, your card is going to overheat the chips are going to overheat and you're going to have drop in performance and such surface of the memory chip that's all done now remove the upper layer it doesn't look uh, pretty it doesn't have to be pretty as long as uh, the whole surface is covered um, if you saw a video I think it was last year uh, with uh, from gamers Nexus uh, one of the um, one of the uh, lower EVGA cards was a uh, RTX 1650 and 1660, like a, a, a single slot, a single slot, no, a dual slot um, mid-range card. Uh, some of the chips were, uh, some of the thermal pads on the memory chips was like shorter, if I remember correctly. I think it was an EVGA uh, uh, GTX. GTX 16 something, I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, EVGA was uh, uh, had trouble in the past uh, with her cards. I don't know why they're cutting corners. So the the chips were not touching the whole surface. The, the thermal pads were not uh, touching the whole surface of the uh, chip itself. So yeah, that's not going to land nice with uh, card owners and everything. And I think after that they did um, uh, they did amend it, uh, the the pads, but you know, as with the GTX uh, 970 from EVGA, which was overheating because the cooling was inadequate, that uh, that should never happen again. But it 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 did it uh, it did with EVGA again, unfortunately. So. Let's try to align to the holes on the back. Yeah. Yep. It's fine. Oh, ah, damn. Right. So, uh, uh, let's put the chips back, uh, but uh, yeah, the alignment seems uh, fine. The pressure uh, they felt seems fine. Uh, so we're gonna reattach uh, the. Uh, that's unfortunate. We're gonna reattach uh, the pads here. Apply some thermal paste and reassemble the card. Just pressing down, so next time I flip this, it so they won't come off again, and they will, and they will stay on. Right, time for uh, the 
thermal paste. I have some MX4 uh, from Arctic, uh, nothing special. Let's apply a bit. Oh, that's too much, but yeah. Um, we could spread it. Let's spread it out. Usually, I don't do this. I'm against the. I'm against the spreading out the. Um, uh, the paste. I let the. Uh, uh, you know, the surface tension do its job. But uh, this is one of the few times I would like to spread out the paste. Will not use a. I will not use a credit card or something. This will do the job just fine. Yep, all the surface area is covered. Yep, it looks pretty nice. Not a thick uh, layer. And now we can attach a PCB to the card. Make sure all the holes are aligned. And that's it. Touchdown. Right, where's the screws? Let's do. So, when we're assembling, obviously, uh, don't uh, over tighten, just make sure that the threads are in. And uh, just use a star cross pattern uh, so the pressure is evenly distributed. Because so at some points, the um, uh, let's say you need to move one of the holes for a half a millimeter or something because it's not aligning, and if everything is screwed down already, you're not going to be able to do this. Uh, so, as you can see, just reapplying all the screws just a bit. And not over tightening it. There's the other bits. Uh, okay, yeah, these are it. The rest are um, uh, for for the shroud. One, two, three, four, five. That's it. Right, so we can tighten them now. Things just tight enough. It doesn't need to be like, oh my god, it's moving a bit. And yeah. yeah, looks pretty tight. Visual check. Yeah, everything's touching as it should. I can see the uh, the base plates touching everywhere, even on the lesser. Uh, thickness uh, pads. Let's do the shroud, and we're nearly finished. Line the holes. Yep, everything seems aligned. Ah, oh, damn. Okay, yeah. Rookie mistake. Forgot to plug in the. <laughs> I forgot to plug in the connector. 
uh, to the fans, the fans uh, won't spin up uh, without the connector. Nobody's perfect, uh, not definitely not perfect. So uh, yeah, no big mistake. But still, uh, one we need to amend. Oh, which screw is that? That one. Ah, damn, it's this one. Yeah. All right. This goes here. I would uh, recheck the card, of course, anyway, so... I would uh, probably probably notice that the fans are not spinning out. <laughs> That's all good. Uh, so... Let's get this down, and... Uh, nearly there. Um, for future reference, I've acquired, I have acquired a uh, R9280X uh, uh, Toxic Edition, again from Simfire, uh, who else, uh, which I'm going to review uh, uh, the next few weeks, next month I think rather, because I'm uh, busy with uh, work and the annual leave and everything. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's coming up. Uh, it was a, uh, it's a, it was another grab from uh, eBay. I was really happy to get that card because again, uh, all the uh, volcanic islands and pirate islands are my um, personal favorite um, series of cards from AMD. Uh, so uh, yeah, um, I'm gonna post some pictures of that along with the Vaporax uh, 290X that, I'm, that I have at the moment. Uh, but uh, yeah, so that concludes. All the screws are uh, done nice and easy. Card is nice and clean. I don't know if the camera could pin up the blue pads and everything, so everything's uh, assembled, corrected, and uh, yeah, time for testing. Uh, thank you. For this and uh, yeah see you in the next one thank you very much